and the disciples. In fact, uh, Jesus spent a lot of time around uh, the Sea of Galilee. And so here, uh, from uh, Mark chapter 4, in verse 35. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing or we are drowning? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? One of the powerful stories in the Bible that happened in the Sea of Galilee. And notice the text. It says, they, Jesus told them, let us go across the other side. And as they were traveling to the other side, a storm came. It says here, right? A great windstorm arose. The waves were breaking into the boat and the boat was already filling. Now, I, I, I don't think that the boat they were riding in were as, as large as this. It was small. Okay? And so, and, and it's the, the waves and the wind were beating against them. And, and what happened? What was the reaction of the disciples during this time? Okay? They were panicking. And, and most of them were seasoned fishermen. And yet they were panicking. Yeah, they were veterans. And yet they were panicking. So something, that, that, that it is something that is unusual. You know, the storm is a powerful storm and, 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 and they, were, they were afraid. And so, they were afraid. They look at Jesus. What was Jesus doing? He was sleeping. He was sleeping on the cushion. Uh, asleep on the cushion. It says here, and then they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Isn't that how we react? A lot of times when troubles come. Lord, are you asleep? Where are you? Can you hear can you hear me? Are you there, Lord? You know, are you asleep, Lord? Hey, do you care? Do you know what what we're going through? Are you seeing what's happening to us? And then he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Now Here's a picture of the Christian life. The Christian life is a journey. Jesus said, we're going to the other side. The other side for us is heaven. As we go, as we travel, as we journey on to the other side, we will experience storms. There will be. It's not something that is not if, it's a when. All of us, Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. It is expected that there will be difficulties because we live in an imperfect world. But there is a world that is, there is a place that, is, that awaits those who believe in Jesus. And so we are, we are crossing, we are journeying onto the other side. And you know, uh, the word he also is used in other translations is a squall, a great windstorm arose, a squall. It's a sudden gust of wind that caused, you know, the waves and so on and so forth. But it's a sudden thing. In other words, you, you, you cannot plan troubles. Or perhaps you could. You want to, you know, mess your life and expect troubles because if you want to mess your life, whatever you sow, you reap, right? But you know what I'm talking about? You know, one day you're cruising along and, and everything is fine. Then all of a sudden, storms come. All of a sudden, things you know, come our way that are beyond our understanding, beyond our control. This comes. You know, he, would, he would knock on your door and say, hey, can I come in? He just comes. And that's the reality of life. Really. And then, like the disciples, we, we react the same way. You know, where are you, God? Do you hear us? Do you know what we're going through? As we, as we travel on, 
journeying on to the other side, uh, the, the place is heaven. Expect that. But expect this too. That Jesus is with us. Expect troubles, but expect also that His grace will be sufficient for us. I just received an email from Janice this morning that Sarah is not yet, but Sarah is about to. She has committed everything to the Lord. Now, uh, Janice is going to the hospital, and she might not last for this week. So, remember, that's one thing that I prayed to the Lord before we came here. I said, Lord, I have two things for Sarah. That, uh, by the way, for those who don't know, Sarah, Sarah used to be our administ <laughs> co-administrator, she's administrator, and she, she's, uh, you know, dying of cancer. Uh, so I said, Lord, two things. You can extend her life. As, as Ezekiah prayed, and you extended Ezekiah's life for 15 years. And second, Lord, if ever that you take her home, that I will be here. I will be there. But if, if the Lord does take her home this week while I'm, I'm here, in God's wisdom, He knows what He's doing. Because I want to be there during the week. I'm sure all of us, those who know her, would want to be there. So we don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to expect something uh, tonight, perhaps, from Janice. But she said she's almost there. But of course, the good hope, the hope that we have, the great hope we have, is that you know, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. We know that He is, she is heading rather, she is heading to the other side. And the other side is heaven. That's the promise for those who believe in Jesus Christ. And so we, so we go through this journey, as we go through this journey, there will be those squalls, there will be those storms. That's assured. But one thing also is assured, He is with us. And He's not sleeping. He'll be our strength in our weakness. He'll be our, our, our shade, you know, uh, under the heat. He promised to be with us through and through. And he will, uh, he will lead us home. He will lead us safely home to our place called heaven. And here in our story, Jesus woke and rebuked the wind. And he said, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Now, tell you what. If Jesus is just a man, um, I mean, wh how could he do this? And he says, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus just, you know, revealed to his disciples that he is the master over nature. <laughs> he's the master over nature. He's, he's, he's the co-creator, remember? You know, he is he's in control. He, the Lord, is in control of our situation. But here's the thing, guys. Sometimes when we go through difficulties, when we go through storms, He can and He will, or He can steal the storm. Sometimes He will steal the storm. But sometimes He will let the storms continue, but He will give peace in our hearts. He will steal our hearts in the midst of the storm. It's not every time that He will remove our the obstacles, but all the time He will keep peace inside. The Bible says, He grants peace to those whose mind is stayed on Him. Those who trust Him. So, the world around us may be, you know, going wild and, uh, and mess up, you know, and your, your, your light may be in trouble around you, but you can still have peace in your heart. Because Jesus said, remember He promised, Peace I live with you. Peace that the world cannot give. See, only Jesus Christ can, can give the true peace. Peace that's not dependent on circumstance. Peace that's not dependent on pills. But peace that He alone can provide. In fact, the Bible says He is our peace. He is our peace. And so, a thousand years ago, so imagine now, now you have a clearer picture when you now read your Bible. So like, yeah, we've been there. We saw it. We've been there, you know. And, and, and you know, Jesus uh, 
cross this and with the disciples. And, and there was another story, remember, that when he walked on water, you know, and the, and the disciples were afraid, they thought he was a ghost. You know, and, and when he got inside and, and the storm was stilled by his presence. And really, when, we, when they brought Jesus into the boat, then there was peace. When you bring Jesus into your life, in your heart, then there will be peace. Even if your surroundings are troubled. See? But the hope, guys, we are heading. He said, let's go to the other, to the other side. We will go. We are going. We are journeying, in fact, already on the other side. Yes, you will experience troubles, but I promise that He will be with us, that His grace will always be sufficient for us. Let's pray and uh, let's lift up Sarah to the Lord this morning. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, dear Lord God, that your son Jesus Christ is he who really claimed to be Lord when he rose again from the dead. And his resurrection validated all his claims. And so we trust in you, Lord Jesus. And Father, we do pray we join our hearts, Lord, as we pray for Sarah this time. Lord God, we thank you for her life. and We don't know, Lord, we may not see her alive when we get back. But we thank you for the promise that she will be saved in your arms. Lord, that she will be home soon. As we are journeying on towards the other side as well. Lord, may you strengthen her, even God, the families around her the friends, may you be, her, may you be their comfort, comforter, Lord. And God, even now, we entrust Sarah to you. We thank you for her life. We thank you for the ministry. We thank you for the gifts you've given her. We thank you for how she has been a help, Lord, to our church, God, and now her mission is almost accomplished, dear Lord. And so we entrust her and commit her to you, Father. And we pray, and we do pray, I do pray for, for each one of us, dear Lord. I know, Lord, soon or one way or another, we go through difficulties. We go through storms in life as we journey on to the other side. But we thank you for the wonderful promise, Lord, that you are with us. You are not sleeping. Sometimes we, we think you are, but you are not. You're always awake and you're always aware of our situation, God, big or small. And Lord, that you are in control, even, even as you have shown how sovereign you are over uh, natural elements, Lord. Jesus, you are in control of our lives. There's nothing that comes to our lives that you don't know. Lord, that it, everything passed through your hands. So that we can put our trust in you. And you are indeed our peace. Nothing else, no one else can provide that. But only you, Lord Jesus. So even today, we put our trust in you. And be our peace. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for enabling us to be here in Israel. God, we acknowledge that it's all your hand. Lord God, uh, organizing all of these things, putting all these things together. Thank you, Father. And we do pray, God, I do pray that indeed, truly, Lord, that even after this trip, Lord, that our faith has been built up and more and more closer, Lord, uh, you have drawn us to you. And that, that our faith will be boosted even more. Thank you, Jesus. We commit you the rest of our day. Thank you, Lord, for, for Moti. Thank you for the men here, Lord, in the boat. Lord, thank you for everyone. We give you praise. We thank you for this opportunity, this experience. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm right. right now in my territory. <laughs>